So now what we're going to look at is the classic situation where you've got the windows are repaired or in good order, but they're not working. And usually it's because they've been overpainted and they're stuck or the sash cords themselves are broken or the balance of the weights isn't correct. So what we need to do is get the sashes out, make sure that they're all working, possibly rebalance and record these sashes. And to do that, first of all, we need to understand that we've got two sashes. We've got a bottom inner sash and we've got a top outer sash. At the moment, these are working, so we would be lucky, but I'll treat it as though they're not. And the first thing you need to do is to actually, if we are going to work with this, we would need to cut the cords so that we can actually remove the bottom sash and get these beads out of the way. A lot of people would use a knife, but the simplest way to do that is to actually put a block of wood in and tap. And yes, this has been done several times before, but once you've done that, you would hope you can remove the beading. The top bead can stay. We don't need the top bead removing and quite often that is the only piece left that is an indicator of the original beads. If they've been replaced, that one doesn't actually need to be removed. What we would then do is, depending on how you want to do it, and I am cheating because I'm going to be able to get my arms around where there would be a wall, is to cut the cords and remove the weights. As I say, I am cheating. You can't put your hands through a solid wall. Once they're out, we can remove the bottom sash. Keep it somewhere safe. Putty on the outside so that it, the glass doesn't fall out if it was going to. And then we can do the same with the inner sash, the top sash. We could mark these weights so that we remember exactly where they go, but that might not be necessary. And the only other thing to do now is to get this parting bead out. Don't use a big flat chisel, scrape a blade. Again, just to break the putty lines. And with a bit of luck, One, store the sash safely again. And now we've got all the beads out. And what you can see now, you can see the repairs that have been carried out to the pulley styles on the inside. So the bottoms of these have been rotten and they've been scarf jointed and replaced going into the sill. The other bit we've got now is the pockets. I would mark all of these, left, right, right, left, just in case. Now we've completely broken this down so that it's all ready to be balanced and got to work. The sashes, we need to get the cords out. And that would be just a case of using your hook. I'm not gonna do all of them. 
but that would get what's left of the sash cords out so that these are clean and ready to go. The other thing that we would do is clean off any large deposits of paint. We clean those off where the sashes run and where the beads are going to go. We don't need to clean all the paint off, we just need to get it back, loose paint sanded off, tied it up so that there's no big lumps of paint stopping it moving. Once we're in this position, do these work? Do the axle pulleys work? We've had to replace one on here. The others, it would just be a case of applying some sort of thin oil. Um, something like a WD-40, although other brands are available, just to get these working freely. They might need some scraping to do that, but they don't often break. The pins don't often wear out, but if they do, we would replace them. So we've had to do one on here. So we're all good to go. This is all ready to go. All we need to do now is record, reweight, rebalance. To do that, we need to know the weight of these sashes. So whether you use digital scales or a spring balance, and you can weigh them. And what does that say? 11 pounds. If that weighs 11 pounds, and most of the weight is the glass, by the way. If that weighs 11 pounds, we've got a weight on each side, which is five and a half. Now this is the bottom sash. Now the sash, because it sits at the bottom in its resting place, this needs to be slightly heavier than the weights. So pound, pound and a half would be perfect for this. So you would want two weights totaling 10 pounds. So that's five pounds each. And again, you weigh the weights. They have got it written on them. They have got in this instance, say six on there. Don't trust it. Weigh them as well, weigh them as a pair. And we would want, say for this one, we would want about 10 pounds so that's the bottom sash is slightly heavier. The top sash, its resting place is up there. So we want the weight slightly heavier. And I know that this again is 11 pounds because I've written on it, I've weighed this before. So we would want the weights to total a bit more, 12, maybe 13 pounds, six and a half or six each. And that's what we just saw. They were the top sash. If the weights aren't marrying up and we need more weight, we can add on extra weights. You can buy these in half, ones, two pounds, or you can make your own, or you can actually buy lengths and cut them. And then you just those, add those on. The perfect way, the better way, is to have the weights the correct weight. So we've done that, we know what the weights are, we know they're correct. The next thing is the sash cords themselves. So this is the top sash. The sash cord, once it's in this groove, is just gonna be held in with clout nails and they end here. If I mark that on here, which I've done, that line is equivalent to here. So I know that once the weights are in place, the sash cord will end there with this in its resting place. So now what I need to do is actually run the sash cord back over the pulleys ready for cutting them to length and putting the weights on. Now we're looking at the sash cord that we're going to use. They come in different sizes. Uh, this is a three. They are metric sizes now as well. They're five, six, eight millimetres. But the original sizes, I'm guessing, went from one, because this is a three. Um, and it's the size appropriate to the weight and to the size of the actual pulley. And then what we'll do is we will just attach the sash cord to my mouse. This is a bit like a, a 
fisherman's knot, but we'll just attach. And all the mouse is, is a weight on the cord. So we don't do them individually, we do these all at once. Starting the wrong way around. We want the outside one to be the first one we do, so we start on the inside. Mouse over the pulley, making sure it doesn't jump off the pulley. And then we pull. And then the next one will go onto the outside, the top sash. the other side just the weight of the mouse and there we have all four corded ready putting the weights on. So I have all four cords ready. The sash weights are ready. These are for the top sash, so these are sixes. So it'll make 12, which is just over a pound heavier than the sash. And then we can tie these off. A nice double knot. Bit of the excess cut off, we don't want that in the way. And we've got our first weight attached and running smoothly. To say I've marked where if the sash is at the top the weights at the bottom for the top sash and I know it ends where my thumb is but if that cord stretches the weight will hit the bottom it'll bottom out so I need to just have it 50 or 60 mil shorter and I'll tie a slip knot so that we don't lose it and that's ready to go for the next stage. It's the right length and it's the right weight. Come over to the other side and we do the same. By the way, round weights work better than square ones because they can spin within the box. You normally wouldn't see all this, it would be behind the masonry behind the box and you wouldn't see it. But as the cord goes up and down, the weights do tend to spin. Square ones can get stuck. So again, drop it to the bottom, allow 50 or 60 millimetres. It's the same length as the other side. You need both cords to be the same length, you need both weights to be the same, otherwise it won't run smoothly. And there we have it ready for the top sash. I'm not gonna do the bottom sash, I'm just gonna do the top one, so we'll get rid of this. For those of you who haven't done these a lot, remember that the putty goes on the outside. It's really embarrassing when you do it the wrong way around and you get the sash inside out. 
We're going to sit that in there and we're going to fix the sash cords. I know where it ends because I have a pencil mark and I've got clout nails, large headed clout nails galvanized to hold it in place. Some people use screws, but they can break the nylon core that is actually in the sash cord, you can cut through them. And there should be no leverage on these to pull them out. Slip knot, so that we can just do it one handed. And then the trick, it'll just stay there. You don't need two people. You don't need two hands. In line with the bottom. Those of you who wondered why carpenters have cross pane hammers. One side done. Make sure the clout nails are not too long. We don't want them going through the wood and hitting the glass, as so that would be self defeating. As you can see, the sash will sit there on its own. And yes, it's fiddly. Now the moment of truth. So it's tight at the top because the weights are slightly heavier. Runs quite well. Now it needs two more pins, two more nails in each side. I would always put three in each side. Once that's done, your top sash is finished. We would then put the Pockets back in place. We then put the parting beads back in place. are slightly worth the wear for wear. And then we would do the bottom sash exactly the same process, except we actually want the weights, the cord for the weights to be longer, because otherwise it would catch on the pulley. So with the top sash, we have the cord shorter. With the bottom sash, we have the cord slightly longer. And the bottom sash will sit nice and tight at the bottom. And then we can just replace the staff beads around it. Make sure that there's a small gap, thickness of a piece of cardboard, so that things run smoothly. And then the final thing that we would do, this would probably all be primed, but the final thing we would do if this was just a service or if we were then leaving it for another painter, 
would be to somehow grease these slides. And what we would use for that is not candle wax, because the painter will not like us and thank us for it. What we would use is a piece of soap, just an ordinary bar of soap. So then the painter can wash the soap off and this can be painted whatever is the appropriate paint. Remembering that there will probably be new putty as well, new linseed oil putty in isolation on the glass. And there we would have our sash fully serviced, working and repaired. Minimal timber. The whole window is only just over one and a quarter cubic feet of timber. So in volume, there's not much timber in this. We've got four pulleys. We've got panes of glass, which as I've already mentioned before, they could be historic glass. And we've saved 90% of a historic window. And yes, that might take two or three days, but that repair done well like this should last another, well, if it's repainted and maintained every five to 10 years, this should last another hundred years. 